Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over using different types of fonts for your web page. Now, I've already got this web page created, and I've used it in a few other videos. I would like to style the headline one using a non-standard font. So I've got this headline one up here, and I can do this right with my CSS. In fact, I'll do it up here near the top. So I'll create a new rule for my H1 element. And the basic CSS property is a font family. You might also see font itself being used, which is a shorthand property in which you would choose the font type, the font size, and so forth. But font family is the basic CSS property to change the font face. Now for years, you're realistically, you've been limited to only using fonts that are common on people's computers. So for instance, if I wanted a sans serif font, which is a font without the little uh, kind of uh, tips on the end, so to speak, I'll give you a quick example here, that I might use something common like uh, Arial or Verdana or Helvetica, something like that. So I'm going to change my font over to Verdana. By default, uh, by the way, on most browsers, it'll be Times New Roman. So as soon as I hit refresh, I now have the Verdana font. Verdana is a sans serif font, whereas Times or Times New Roman is called a serif font because it has the little feet on the end. Serif fonts tend to be better for print purposes, whereas sans serif font tend to be better for electronic screen readers and things like that. So that's a simple way to change fonts. However, we're limited to these very common and sometimes boring fonts like Arial, Verdana, Helvetica, and so forth. And um, so you can't be too creative. If you were to put in the name of a uh, some cool font, by the way, if the name of your font has spaces in it, you'll need to use single or double quotations. But if you were going to put in some cool font and a visitor didn't have that on their computer, it would just default to Times New Roman. So here we have Google Fonts, and it's google.com slash fonts, and you can use their tools to search for different kinds of fonts. I'm doing a search for some handwriting fonts. You can adjust, do you want thin fonts or thicker fonts? And then when you find something you think you'd like to try, so I'll try this one, Gloria Hallelujah, then I can, I can work with this. Now, the website advises you only want to use, you only want to do this with fonts you're definitely going to use on your website because it will actually slow the download process of your site because this font needs to get downloaded to your visitor's computer so that they can use it on the website. But it is pretty easy to do. If you're going to be using multiple unusual fonts, then you can choose the add to collection option and then you can kind of download multiple fonts at one time for your visitor. I'm just going to do this one and they've got an option over here for quick use. So I'll click on that. They're letting me know it still should have a pretty fast page load. And um, it gives me the code that I need. And this is going to make, make our life pretty easy. They give us a couple different options. I'm going to choose the standard, which is a basic link tag. And I'll copy this link tag. This link tag is actually going to go up in our head section of our page above the opening style tag. Now if I was doing an external style sheet, which is perfectly reasonable, then this link tag would go above my style sheet link. Okay, So I would import the font before I imported or referenced my style sheet. So that's kind of important there. Now, they have a couple other methods, um, including uh, add import. I think I'll address add import in another video because there's a few things we can do with add import. And, uh, and there's a JavaScript method as well. But the standard should work fine for us. So I'm bringing in this link, and then they really tell us it's pretty easy. Font family, which is the CSS property we just tried out a second ago, and we just put in the name of the font. So I'll head over here to font family. I'll replace what I have with what they've given me. So I can save this, head back over to my browser, refresh, and now I'm using this unusual font. And of course my visitors will see this unusual font. And if you go to the video, I'm sorry, if you go to this web page by following the link in the description, you can check it out for yourself. Now you'll notice they've done two things here. The specific font, Gloria Hallelujah, comma, cursive. 
This is a way you can give a plan B, a backup font. So if for some reason this first font fails on the user's computer, it'll default to whatever system default cursive related font the person has. Um, it could be something like, I think the brush font is very popular. So go ahead and do it just like this. But otherwise it's an easy process, right? Google fonts, find the font you like, put their link tag in the head section of your page above any references to your style sheets, reference the font family wherever you want, and then now you can start using this font as you would like. And in fact, we could use it all over the place if we really wanted to go crazy. We could create a rule for body. There we go. And now all of our fonts on the page are going to use that particular font. So it might require some adjusting of my uh, fig captions, but there you go. So have fun with fonts.